Hello everyone and welcome back to AWS Simplified. In my previous videos, I've shown you how to integrate lambdas into step functions as part of event orchestration. But in this video, I want to show you how to start a step function instance from a lambda. So let's jump right into it. So here we are in the step function console. So I've actually already created a step function instance and it's called step function from lambda. And I've predefined some ASL, uh, so some step function code that does a fairly trivial task. So let's just take a look at this really quick. Uh, so it takes an input and it's going to be communicating with the SQS send message API. And here is the URL. So the queue that I've created in advance of this video and the body that it's going to be posting to this SQS is going to be a JSON object that has a transaction ID. And the value is going to be coming from the input of the step function. And the type, same deal. So there's a type key and the value is going to be coming from the input. So that's to say our step function input is going to contain a transaction ID, which is a string and a type, which is also a string. Okay. So it's a very straightforward application here. So this all looks well and good. I'm going to copy the ARN because we're going to need it when we create our Lambda function and actually try to start an instance of the step function. So this is all fine here. Now let's go over to Lambda and actually create our Lambda function that's going to do this. Okay, going to click on create function. And we're going to be doing this from scratch. I'm going to name my function name step function invoker. And we're going to be doing this in Python 3.6, 3.7 rather. And then uh, this is actually quite important, the permission section. So let's scroll down here. Uh, so I'm going to be using an existing role that actually has the step function access associated with it. However, if you are doing this from scratch, um, you need to go out and create a role that has the permission that you need. I'm using full access, but I encourage you to use least privilege model. So only use the permissions that you need for this exercise. So you actually need the step function start execution policy, and you need to associate that with a role. So I've already done that here, except that I'm using the full access policy. So I get all those permissions for free. So after that's done, uh, you can go ahead and click on create a function in the bottom right here. This can sometimes take a bit. Oh, that was pretty quick. That's great. Okay. So that was created successfully. Uh, so let's scroll down here. So now we can actually write our code to interact with step functions. Uh, so you can do this in the editor if you choose. I'm going to do it in Sublime just because I'm a little bit more comfortable there. So let's switch over to Sublime. The first step I want to do here is just paste in the ARN that corresponds with the step function that we created in the previous step. And we're going to need that in a moment or so when we interact with the client library that needs an ARN as an input. And then let's just take whatever we have here as a template. Uh, get rid of the stuff we don't need. All right, perfect. Okay, so let's get to it. So uh, we're gonna need the JSON library. So that's so let's leave that as it is. We're gonna need the Bodo three library, and we're also gonna need the UUID library. So we're gonna be using a function from this library that generates a random hash of values, and this will make sense in a moment. It's actually the first step here, so we'll probably have to get into it right away. Um, and then the other thing that we need is an instance of the Bodo three step function client. So we need to say client is equal to Bodo three dot clients. And you say step functions. So now we have a reference to that client. Okay, so the first thing that we need is the transaction ID. Uh, but before we do that, let's just recall what the input to this step function is going to look like. So the input is going to be a JSON that looks like this. So we're going to have transaction ID and then something. Excuse me. There we go. Foo. And then we have type. And that can be either purchase or refund. We're just going to hard code this as purchase here just in this example. So just a reminder, that's what our input is going to look like. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is actually generate a value that corresponds with the transaction ID. And this could be anything you want. It could be a random string of values. It could be something meaningful like a customer ID plus a date. It could be absolutely anything. The only condition though, is that this value, whatever you're using as the key for the step function instance needs to be unique. You cannot have two step function instances that correspond with the same key value. Now, since we're using transaction ID as the kind of identifier in this example, it makes sense to have a unique value here. So let's actually do that right now through the UUID library. So let's say our transaction ID, and we're going to store this in a variable is equal to UUID dot UUID one. 
And what this thing will generate is just a random string of characters separated by dashes. So it'll look like, like something like this. And many, many more of these variables. I think it's limited to uh, four delimiters, so probably 30 or so uh, characters. Uh, so that's what it's going to look like. So we need to actually convert this to string since UUID1 actually returns an object. So now we have a string instance of that. So this is going to be the value that we populate into the body of the step function. It's also going to be the name field or the identifier of the step function instance as well. Okay, so let's proceed to the next step and actually define our input object. So let's say our input is equal to a JSON. And it's going to look similar to what I have above here on line 10. And let's say the transaction ID is equal to what we just defined. So that's going to be that UUID. And we're going to say the type, surrounded in quotes, of course. And we're going to say purchase. Okay, so now we have a JSON, sorry, a dictionary object in Python that corresponds to this object here that we're looking at. Okay. So next we need to actually call the step function API. It's called the start execution API. And we can store the result in a response object if we want. But we can say response is equal to client.start underscore execution. And we have a couple things that we need to pass in here. Okay, so the first one that's absolutely mandatory is state machine ARN. And you can see now why I copied this from the previous step because we need to paste this in here. So let's do that right now. Paste that in. Make sure you put a comma at the end here. Let's just center this guy. All right, cool. And the second field that you need is the name. So this is the unique identifier of this step function instance. So it's going to be transaction ID, which is the same value that we're populating in the JSON payload. And the third value is the actual JSON payload that you want to pass in. And this can be used throughout your step function for orchestration or to identify certain key values to determine what you want to do in this step function. So for our purposes, it's this JSON object. For yours, it can be anything you like. So let's say input is equal to, now there's a key step here. Recall that this is a Python dictionary object. This API requires a string. So we need to stringify and convert this dictionary object into a JSON. And so the way we do that is just use the JSON library, json.dumps, and pass in that object, the input object, which, which corresponds to the dictionary object we created previously. Okay, so everything looks good here. Let's copy this out. Gonna go back to our step function. Paste that in. Click on save in the top right. In order to test it out, we need to create a test event. You can put whatever you want in the event name. Leave this as default. We're not reading off the input, so it doesn't matter. If you were reading off the input in your Lambda, you may wanna change this, but we don't care, so we don't need it. Clicking on create in the bottom right. Okay, and let's click on test now to see if this worked. Okay, you can see that it succeeded. A whole bunch of jargon here that we don't really care about. Let's click this a few times. Test, pass, whatever, how many times you want. Okay, so it looks like it's succeeding from the logs here. Let's head over to step functions and actually verify that there's multiple instances. So we can see eight instances have been successful. If we actually click into here now, now we can look at the separate instances that correspond to each click of the button on that Lambda function. So these values all kind of at first glance may look at the same, but you can see here AD5, AD0. So these are all unique values that have all their own unique key. So if we click on one of these, we can see what the step function was doing and its progress. So you can see through the green uh, box here that it was successful at this step. And you can see here, uh, you got a 200 OK when we were communicating with the SQS send message API. So hopefully you found this video useful. I have quite a few videos on step functions and step function orchestration, including Dynamo and SQS and SNS. Highly suggest to check those out. I'll put a playlist in the pop-up that's coming up in a second. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.